All right, you guys. Well, welcome everybody. Happy summer, end of summer. It's so fun. I'm like, I never want the summer to end. If this is okay, I'm gonna open this up. Is this okay for everybody? Oh no, it's in your ass. <laughs> I won't do that. Okay. Um, so welcome to the fatigue and stress management workshop. I'm really excited about this one. I was working with Dr. Gary and Dr. Lisa, my parents, today. <laughs> and we are getting all prepped for tonight. I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a wealth of knowledge. So I think you guys are in for a really big treat and a lot of good info to take home with you. Um, and so if you're new here and you don't know about us or maybe you've just heard a little bit, we are Health and Balance. We've been here since 1987, and we do chiropractic and natural health care and um, incorporate a lot of different modalities for healing and really getting to the root cause of the symptoms so that our patients can get healed and well long-term. So a lot of you are patients with us, and you've experienced that healing, which is so wonderful. And we love to see all of your stories of healthy wellness and all that good stuff. Um, so we all, one of our parts of our mission and vision is to provide education in terms of natural health care and to give people tools to live a healthier lifestyle and to find root causes. So doing these workshops is a big part of that mission that we do. Um, so we're always doing different ones. We've got a lot of good upcoming ones, but I'm super glad you guys are here for this. Um, so I'm gonna let Dr. Gary and Lisa take it away and um, they've got a PowerPoint for you, we've got handouts for you. Um, and yeah, really good stuff. So come on up, you guys. You take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. Yeah, thank you. So I asked Lisa to start the workshop tonight. No, I asked and then, you. And then she asked me. <laughs> <you. laughs> He's a much better speaker than I am. Oh I know, around the house, you speak really well. Thank you. <laughs> I listen really well. At least I try to. Um, 42 years of marriage. Who can, who, how many, how many years do we have? 45. 45. 45. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anybody else? 46. 46 Ooh. years of marriage. Congratulations. Wow. And um, who is considering getting married and isn't married yet? Well, I mean, at some point, yes. <laughs> Maybe eventually. Okay. All right. Well, marriage um, is such a blessing. Has anybody ever heard of anybody being stressed in marriage? <laughs> yeah, every now and then, every now and then. Um, I was thinking about stress and fatigue and why we were um, here tonight, really. And I, one thing I like to do, if you guys are open to it, is make sure we, we have a lot of materials, we have a lot of demonstrations, um, and there's ways to measure stress, there's ways to measure the effects on us that stress has. Um, we're gonna demonstrate some of those things tonight, some clinical things, and then my goal is to not overwhelm you with uh, the biochemistry and physiology of stress and what it does. But I also do want to plant a few seeds so that you can start to understand what stress actually does to us. I mean, stress in small doses can be really, really helpful, right? I mean, if you know it's time to run because there's a grizzly bear that's charging you, Stress is really good because you get filled with adrenaline. Or the mother, you've heard the more stories of the mother whose child is trapped underneath the car and she gets superhuman strength with adrenaline and picks up the car and gets the baby free. You know, so stress can be really helpful, can increase our strength. But chronic low grade stress can be extremely disastrous to our health, to speed up our aging so many different things. So I think um, what I just wanted to do is, number one, who on a scale of zero to 10, um, you don't have to raise your hand, but I just want to know how to kind of use the flow of the evening. Um, how many people would say they're at a level four stress or above as you look at your life, 
politics, um, money, relationships, living situations, concern about the future, um, maybe physical stresses, health challenges, marriage challenges, things like, is anybody at a four or above, could I just see some hands? One, two, three, four, five, six, thank you for your ten, ten being highest, right? Ten being highest, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, then I think what we have to share with you could be extremely valuable. Um, because stress, as we know, how well are you gonna sleep if you think there's a lion that is roaming around right outside your camp thinking that you look like a good meal, how well are you going to sleep? Mm. Mm. Not so well. Because cortisol is a stress hormone and it is going to be high and cortisol is just the opposite of melatonin. That's why some people take melatonin to sleep. There's better ways to handle stress than just taking melatonin. But cortisol is a stress hormone and it should be extremely high in the morning when you first wake up because it's time to go. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work I go. We gotta get that going in the morning. But at nighttime, it's supposed to be high and then as the, the day goes, I should start over here looking at you guys. <laughs> it should be high in the morning and as the day goes on, it should go like that and go way down. But at the same time, your melatonin levels should be really low in the morning, and as time goes on, they should increase. Again, I'm not suggesting you take melatonin, but what I am suggesting is that you figure out why your cortisol is so high at the end of the day. Why are the stress hormones so high? Because, you know, you just look at caffeine, for example. Caffeine doubles the half-life of cortisol. So if you have caffeine to keep going in the afternoon, Hmm. You may not get as deep into a restful sleep where you wake up feeling good the next morning, right? So if you're going to use caffeine, hopefully, number one, it's an organic source, an organic tea or organic coffee. Number two, it's a morning thing. It's not an afternoon or evening thing. Now, there's some people that can process caffeine a lot better than others, but um, I wouldn't suggest an espresso after dinner at the Italian <laughs> restaurant that you go to. Unless you'd rather be up for a while. Or unless you'd rather not wake up feeling that refreshed and energetic in the morning. I suppose some people might want that. I, I don't know anybody, but anyhow, moving on. So here we go. Now, Mo, I still, we are remote. We just tappy tap. Right, this is where Lisa is going to do such a great job of going through this. <laughs> she's she's my favorite speaker. So, Lisa, go ahead. No, you go ahead. What? No, just click the next one. <laughs> see? See how it goes? All right, let's see. <laughs> okay, so we want to understand the impact of stress and fatigue on your health, learn the health and balance force system approach, and learn practical techniques to manage your stress and reduce fatigue. Create an action plan for implementing stress management techniques into your daily plan. I want you guys to really leave with a lot of value. I mean, you had to come here tonight, you had to eat this pizza and have a salad and have a glass of wine and hang out with a bunch of good people. I know you've paid a lot, but I want it to have great value. Here we go. This is one of my favorite people. He let us take his picture, Stephen. But um, stress and fatigue can be managed with multiple of techniques, multitude of techniques, including but not limited to relaxation techniques like deep breathing, meditation, guided imagery, prayer we left out, mm -hmm. okay. yoga, neuroemotional technique, which is phenomenal, biochemical balancing, supplementation, etc. Not everything works for every person. It's important to find the cause in order to determine a solution. Some people would rather just take an Advil instead of trying to figure out why would I need an Advil? Hmm. 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 The effects of chronic stress on health. 
We are made to handle small bits of stress like we talked about, but when stress becomes chronic, it has detrimental effects on our bodies and eventually causes disease. Chronic stresses have been found to increase the risk of high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, digestive issues, sleep problems, depression, anxiety, and muscle pain. Anybody ever experienced any of those? A couple? Okay. The causes of ligament laxity is phenomenal. Do you know what that is? Can anybody explain ligament laxity? What, is it, what does it sound like with the words? Anybody? It means your ligaments are not tight to keep your joints from over moving. Why in the world would that be? Anybody got an idea? Mm -hmm. It's because to manufacture stress hormones, they're called mineral corticoids, to manufacture them, it requires the minerals in the system. Now, if our body is starting to not have enough minerals to manufacture these hormones called mineral corticoids, I'm not gonna test you on that or ask you to spell it, I promise. But guess what the body does? Does anybody have an overdraft protection on their bank account? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Mm -hmm. So what's that for? If you're overdrawn, it will lend you the money. Good. Where do you think the body might pull the extra minerals from if it doesn't have enough to, to handle making the stress hormones? Your bones, your teeth. And? And apparently your ligaments. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> That's true. So it's called executive syndrome, where they found that the highest number of knee injuries in American colleges happened at one school. Anybody take a wild guess which school would have the number one amount of knee injuries? Stanford. Stanford. Good, good choice. I said Harvard, and I was wrong. Harvard. Good choice. <laughs> But there is a college that actually combines basic training in the military with an extremely tough academic program. Anybody heard of West Point? Mm -hmm. West Point. Basic training and severe academics. So with these kids studying that hard, what do you think their weekends look like? What does Friday night look like? Woohoo! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're, they're pushing it at both ends, right? And these are the people with the most amount of knee injuries. They have ligament laxity. We'll also show you that the muscle that's related to the stress organ called the adrenals is called the sartorius, which in Latin means uh, Taylor's muscle. It's the longest muscle in the body. It goes from right here to the inside of the knee. Well, guess what? If you have too much stress, it's gonna short circuit that breaker in the house, and this muscle is going to go weak. You're going to destabilize the uh, the knee, and you have ligament laxity. You're going to have knee problems. Mm -hmm. And we're going to demonstrate some of that stuff tonight. Premature aging of the skin. Gosh, I wish that hadn't happened to me. Mm -hmm. Vital organs. Tougher transition to menopause and andropause. Lisa, will you please say something about? Tell me about menopause and andropause. Well, and why, how that could all happen. Well, with menopause, as women go into menopause, their adrenal glands also make estrogen and progesterone. And if your adrenal glands are stressed out, the estrogen and progesterone is not going to be in sufficient amounts to carry you through in a calm, mellow way. And so you're going to crash and burn when menopause comes. So if women go through menopause and crash and burn, it's because their adrenals are trashed and andropause is the same thing for what for, who? What is for men men andropause is for men so when men get into their later kind of flow in life their adrenal glands make testosterone and so they are gonna go through that later part of life and have a little what bit what happens to those guys they have a tendency to gain weight and um yeah what happens to their libido and that can diminish as well and their capacity and their capacity yep so adrenal health is important in men and women as they age a hundred percent for them to stay their bones to stay strong for them to um, be healthy 
Yeah. Yeah. And we have a little flow chart. We, you guys are all going to get a handout of kind of what we feel is the best of the best. So if you do want to start a little file on stress and your body and how you could educate other people or understand it better yourself, you're going to look at, with a handout tonight of a bunch of pretty easy to understand um, solutions and also understanding the chemistry of stress and what it does to you. And that's where, isn't that where the uh, gynecomastia comes in? Does anybody, who knows what gynecomastia is? Anybody? Who's that? <laughs> Come on, just tell them. <laughs> gynecomastia is when there's too much fat on a man's breast tissue. That's yeah. gynecomastia. Yeah. So there, guys can get boobs to grow if they go too far into stress or if they have too much um, blood sugar that raises up too much, they can turn their testosterone into estrogen. And then they start developing fat and fat can go into the chest. All right. Decreased immune function, that's been well documented. If you're under stress, you're usually gonna get sick or you're gonna have a diminished immune response. Hormone irregularities, we talked about that. Increasing percent body fat, we talked about that. Long-term stress on the adrenals will eventually affect the thyroid gland as well. Any questions along the way, you guys, please, you know, I, I can elaborate as you can tell. Did you say the um, thyroid <coughs> gland can be uh, affected, affected by yeah. the stress? Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. You will develop hypothyroidism if you're under significant stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here, the adrenal cream that you recommended, you know, uh, it's, it's good to continue to take that. Right absolutely. Because the, the adrenal column, which are, well, I have on the slides, it's okay. Um, that has something called phosphatidylserine. And what that is known to do is to dampen cortisol or to break down cortisol just the opposite of what caffeine does. <clears throat> so then you can sleep better yeah. and you can wake up feeling more refreshed yeah. and avoid a lot of these things happening. Mm -hmm. So this one, you, um, hey Maria, <coughs> could you yeah, pass all these out to everybody just so you can see? But cortisol is the stress hormone. And one thing I'm gonna show you is that stress isn't just emotional stress. Stress comes in four different categories. Stress can come with electromagnetic field stress. Why did our parents tell us, now Johnny, don't get too close to the television. You shouldn't be up that close to the television. Why was that? Yes, electromagnetic field stress. Why is it that they found in Great Britain that people that hold their cell phones right next to their head, mm -hmm. okay. whichever side they hold their phone to, is where they develop brain cancer and tumors? Why is it? Is it obvious? Yeah, EMFs. I just, I just turned, I called AT and T on Monday. I got an uh, AT and T phone, uh, an Apple phone, the 11. And I, I was told that the 11 would not accept 5G. But I noticed as soon as I got my new phone, it has 256 <laughs> megabytes of information that it could store. I started having hand stuff. Like my hand is like hurting. It's like, what is going on with my hand? And, and then my right hand and my left hand. And I, developed trigger finger and all this stuff that was going on. And if you look up, if you do a search on the internet of cell phones and hand pain, there's a lot of issues. So it's better to not be holding the phone right next to your head. It's better to put on a speakerphone. It's better to put it over there. The less, I mean, how many people think it's smart to put your head in the microwave and turn it on? <laughs> no. Same technology, same technology. So I am actually turning my 11 uh, iPhone back in for a new phone that at least they told me, and I hope it's true, is the iPhone SE third generation that can only accept 4G. Because 5G evidently is like 10 times more radical and powerful than the 4G was. Wow. 
So there's a lot of crazy stuff that, you know, we don't know about, and that's on purpose, that we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you turn off 5G as an option, I don't know if that reduces I, I thought that that was the case, but on my phone, it didn't have an option, and when I called AT&T, they said, no, I, actually all the phones from six on can accept our 5G compatible, but she said on your phone, it doesn't have the option of turning off 5G. So on the 14 that I have, I turn off 5G. You do? Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, maybe you can show me those little bumps and how to get there. Yeah. And maybe that would be, would anybody want him to share that with us? <laughs> maybe that's the good part of the seminar. Certainly. Mm -hmm. All right, that'd be great. But look at what cortisol does, the stress hormone. It's going to suppress your anterior pituitary, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. There, there goes right there, your... thyroid stimulating hormone. Hepatic detoxification. Does anybody know what that is? That's liver. A bit, the liver's ability to detoxify and break down chemicals in our environment to, to circulate our hormones the way that they're supposed to, to handle blood sugar, that's the liver, hepatic. Hippocampus, hippocampus destruction, that's part of our brain. Mm -hmm. wow. T4 to T3. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone, and that's done in the liver. And if your cortisol levels are high, you can't turn the inactive form of thyroid hormone, T4, and take an iodine molecule off of it and turn it into T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. Thyroid resistance, suppression of secretory IgA, that's your immune system in your GI tract. Wow. Inflammatory cascades, blood pressure, cholesterol goes up. There goes the uh, man boobs, estrogen in men, <laughs> testosterone in women, like facial hair on women, it's a very real thing. Bearded lady in the local carnival, and uh, <laughs> leptin resistance. Leptin is what helps us to be able to decrease our body fat and not carry a bunch of extra fat. I mean, some people really like a lot of extra fat, and some don't. So there it is. Isn't that amazing? Just stress. If we don't handle stress, if we don't figure out where our stress is coming from and develop some healthy lifestyle habits and techniques, these are the effects. Stress and fatigue are different, but often related. Stress is the body's response to a challenge, while fatigue is a feeling of exhaustion. Lisa, you made this one. So, causes of fatigue are blood sugar imbalances. So, one of the things when, when you have all gone and had your blood sugar drawn and you're fasting, what's really important about the fasting is kind of seeing where is your blood sugar in the morning after you've fasted all night. It should be level, and that is your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are doing that. They are pumping out cortisol so that you can stay level during the night. So, if you wake up in the morning and you get your blood drawn and you have a really, really low blood sugar, that's your adrenals. So that means you're stressed and that your adrenals are not able to carry on a really balanced blood sugar. And then also too, you can also be that person that perhaps after you eat, you've got too high of blood sugar. So both of those things can you know, cause fatigue. So those, those areas, if you've got those, too high, too low of blood sugar needs to be dealt with. Mitochondrial dysfunction just basically means, you guys all remember the Krebs cycle? Remember that? Citric acid cycle? How our mitochondria make ATP. So sometimes people don't have enough nutrients to have a generating ATP happening, and that's a really easy thing to check. And we can check that tonight on somebody. I'll show you how we can check mitochondrial dysfunction using your body as a chemistry lab. It's really cool. What's ATP? Um, ATP is our energy bundles that we use. It's like if you want to put gas in your fuel tank as a human. Your use ATP is your fuel, so and the mitochondria make it. Um, toxic overload. So if you're like we were talking a little bit about liver tonight, and Gary was just talking before about what cortisol does. Um, if it's in, in too high of amounts, and you have 
Maybe your liver's not detoxifying well. So if you are not detoxifying well, you can have a toxic overload and you can have some fatigue. Bacterial or viral infections can cause fatigue. Adrenal fatigue, which we've already talked about quite a bit, and improper sleep patterns. So, and sleep is so important and sleep is really hard to get and sleep is um, complex. So one of the things about improper sleeping patterns is going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time is super important, really important. How do we make it go forward? Arrow to the right. I don't have my glasses on. Hopefully that's it. Okay, so um, systems in balance is on the left. So if your structural, biochemical, energetic, and emotional systems are all in balance, you're gonna feel healthy, you're gonna sleep well, you're gonna detoxify, you're gonna have energy. And then if stress is coming in in any of those areas, biochemical, structural, pain, inflammation, emotional, we talked, we, you guys all know what emotional stress, electromagnetic, Gary was talking about that with his iPhone, routers should be turned off at night, you shouldn't be sleeping by them, your phone should be far away. One of the biggest electromagnetic stressors is, a, is hair dryers, believe it or not. They're mm -hmm. really electromagnetically stressful. Mm -hmm. And then biochemical stress, if, you know, can be so many different things, you know, eating organic food and drinking clean water and that sort of thing is some of the things that you can do to keep your biochemical stress down. Um, so here's, this is just very full of information, but causes of karmic stress in each one of those areas you can see. Can you guys see that? No. Yeah, so I mean, that's just full of information. Um, with the biochemical, some of the things that are important are chronic and acute infections, hormonal imbalances, digestive disorders. I mean, you know, sometimes there's things that we're eating that are just not good for us. And um, that's an easy thing to come to conclusions. There's blood testing, there's manual muscle testing that can tell you that. Um, allergies, toxicity, dehydration. So those are just some of the, you can see there's so many things that can cause stress, which we all know. Before um, you leave that, Lise, going back. just go back and just give them a couple more examples of each one of them so they can really see stress is a term that isn't just emotional. It can be structural, yep. it can be biochemical, yep. it can be electromagnetic, it can be you know, emotional. Right. And it's just a term for something that the body's having to deal with that it would rather not. Right. Well, and for instance, like what's on here is like surgeries. I mean, surgeries and scar tissue is, is a really important thing to kind of get under control. If you think about our bodies, our bodies, has anybody been to the, um, to the body show where they actually plasticize the body? Have you guys seen anybody into that? Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And so in that, they take bodies and they, they take the respiratory system and they take it out, they plasticize it, and you can see the whole respiratory system. And then they take the digestive tract all the way from the top to the bottom and they plasticize it, you can see the whole thing. The nervous system. Well, one of the things that's really interesting is the connective tissue, they cannot take that out and plasticize it because it's everywhere. Your connective tissue is your skin. It's your ligaments, it's your tendons, it's your muscles, it's your blood, fascia. so and your fascia. Yeah. So everything is, your whole body is basically connective tissue. So you can't separate that from all the other things that you can separate. And one of the things that's interesting about that is you think about it, if you have pain in your connective tissue, it's, it's affecting a very large area of your body. So with surgeries and with scar tissue and all that, that it's so important to just kind of, to heal that because it's a constant stress, right? Pain is a stress. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, no, I think, I mean, we all can see all the emotional stressors, past hurt, divorces, deaths, relationship stress, financial loss, worry, anger, fear. I think Lisa, you hit on a really good one. Um, California OSHA did a study on little kids and they found that the average little boy by the time he reached his sixth birthday has had approximately 200 physical stressors. Now, the, the book that we all study as doctors is called Guidance Physiology. And they say that when somebody gets injured, like how many people have been in a car accident? Raise your hand. Okay, good. All right. 
How many people uh, fell off the monkey bars as a kid? Okay. How many people fell off their bike? Oh, yeah. uh, how many people had a ski accident? Uh, water ski, snow ski. All right. How many people were told they fell off the diaper changing table? <laughs> how many people fell off their bunk bed? How many people's brother ever got them in a headlock and took them to the ground? How many people ever had the chair pulled out of them right when they were ready to sit down and everybody laughed at you? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have three days of inflammation after trauma, but beginning day five, your body starts to lay down scar tissue. And during the next 12 weeks, if, you're, if it's not kept moving with massage and stretching and adjustments and things like Shock that. Shockwave. What? Shockwave. Yeah. Um, then what your body does is it, it lays a matrix of scar tissue like a spider web. And in between every layer of scar tissue, there's a nerve that gets put on there. So if that scar is stretched or massaged or pushed on, it creates pain. It creates stress in your nervous system. So that's one of the biggest structural stressors. Then if you think about the tightening of a tissue, what do you think that's gonna to do to your posture? Has anybody seen anybody walk like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Anybody ever seen anybody walk like this? Yeah. Versus walking like you used to do when you were young and full of vitality and health, right? What do you think is holding a person in those weird, abnormal postures? Two, two words. Ah, oh, you got it. A plus. Scar tissue. Scar tissue. Yeah. And that's what we're all up against. Just like crooked teeth in a person's mouth. What's the process? Who had scar who had braces? You had braces. What was the process? Um, well, they, you know, put bands on your teeth and make them move and you know, over a period of time. Yeah, and over, did, you, did you go on a weekly basis like most kids? Uh, I was an adult, but yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and how'd that feel? Awful, painful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Why do you think that was? Well, it's um, moving bone around. Yeah, changing patterns facilitating those pain neurons, right? And then what'd you do after your teeth were straight? Well, I was, I was supposed to wear a retainer, mm -hmm. which I stopped wearing and then my teeth got crooked again and I had to do it all over. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> well, you have a beautiful smile now. Well, now I wear my retainer. Well, then. <laughs> you learn. Yeah. There you go. So anyhow, um, lots of different kinds of stress. I think we're good on that. Yeah, I do. So how to deal with stress, decrease your structural stressors, decrease your emotional stressors, decrease your electromagnetic stressors, and decrease your biochemical stressors. Pretty Okay, so Gary, why don't you talk about this one? Well, there's just lots of things that, you know, professionals can help you with, and that's not really why we came here tonight. I mean, there's, we want to show you kind of a lot of stuff that you can do. If anybody ever wants to take a closer look at what can be done by a group of professionals, of course that's available. But uh, we really want to really focus on what you guys can do yourselves, okay? So um, there's so many incredible things that are happening now in healthcare. It's such a different paradigm than it used to be. Here you have a symptom, here we'll give you a pill. Um, you. Um, you have this going on, let's give you surgery. There's so much more going on than that now. Um, and it, a lot of that's available for people that want to look a little deeper. Self-care practices. Incorporate self-care practices like yoga, meditation, prayer, aromatherapy, essential oils to reduce stress and fatigue, take breaks, and prioritize rest. What was it that Rest, that's right. Yeah. Rest is Sabbath. Good one. Who knows who that guy is? Wim Hof. Wim Hof. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Um, he is uh, quite impressive in his ability to withstand cold water. He, he found that when he submerges himself in cold water, it changes his physiology. 
technology, he uh, introduced a breathing technique that um, helps kind of force out a lot of the um, uh, what, toxins in your body. Um, he, was, he was able to climb to the top of Everest in his shorts. But and barefoot. No. Barefoot. Yes. Without, without um, oxygen or something. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He has the record for staying in ice water. Um, without his core body temperature dropping, um, all kinds of other, he was injected with viruses uh, that his body automatically killed because he was following these processes, so he's got something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our son, um, Raya, leads all kinds of breathing uh, classes down at Heisler Park every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The men meet at 7 a.m., the women meet at 8.30, and um, if you ever want to go, you can go join him. It's complimentary. First one, and then it's like 20 if you want to, you know, continue on. It's really cool because he incorporates a lot of this. And then a lot of times in our backyard, he'll do ice baths and uh, breathing protocols and stuff like that. Nobody has to, you know, climb Everest um, with just a Speedo on, but, um, <laughs> but he did. And, uh, but, it, grounding, what is grounding? Who knows about grounding? Does anybody know about grounding? Grounding, You know. Well, you take a rod and you stick it down in the earth about eight feet, and if it's not wet enough, you put some water on it and drive another one in. And what does that do? Well, it takes any electric current and dissipates it to the ground. There you go. So, do you think my rubber sole shoes are letting me get grounded into the Earth's magnetic field. Nope. How many people think, well, what is an example of how strong the Earth's magnetic field? Can anybody think of probably the most incredible um, representation of, of how strong the Earth's magnetic field? Who wants to tell me? Just, nobody's wrong, just give me an idea, come on, you know something about it. You? Oh, yeah. Come on, okay. So what about the moon cycle? Does anyone know anything ever happened with the tides of the ocean? What, what changes the high tide and the low tide? I thought that was gravity. <laughs> it's, no. it's the magnetic field of the moon and the earth that pulls the entire ocean all the way back for a low tide and all the way up for a high tide. Wow. So who thinks that the magnetic field of the Earth is rather strong? Yeah. So anytime you get a chance to walk on the Earth without your shoes on, <laughs> do it. Walk around your house without your shoes on. Well, but or, wood is not a good conductor though. True. So it has to be concrete, mm -hmm. asphalt, mm -hmm. earth, dirt, sand, dirt, sand. Even yeah. concrete. Concrete. Concrete, concrete even, yeah. Yeah, concrete's better than wood. Wood's not a good conductor. And that's why you see me sometimes in moccasins. If I try to be able to, you know, recharge my battery. Because how do batteries work? Fields. Mm -hmm. Positive, negative. So engage in daily phys physical activity and exercise, even just going for a walk, 30 minutes, even better if you did it barefoot. Mm -hmm. Breathing techniques, Wim Hof, Qigong, Qigong. Uh, thousands and thousands of years of what the Chinese have done to bring energy up into the body. Maybe if there's time and I don't talk too long, I can show you Qigong stuff. Watch the sunrise. What'd you tell about that? So if you watch the sunrise and set, it helps to set your circadian rhythms. And when and you need that light at the angle that the light is in, it actually sets your your circadian clock. So mm -hmm. the more you can get up and see the sunrise, or just you know if you wake up, you look at the sun. When you go when like right now, like just looking at the light right now, it just resets your circadian rhythm. So that's if you're having trouble sleeping. That's just a, a great thing to do. 
Yeah, so just looking at that angle of the sun for all of us is helping us set our circadian rhythms. Okay, so what's a circadian rhythm? Circadian rhythm is when Gary was talking about cortisol in the high in the morning and it gets us up and going. Um, that is a normal circadian rhythm and then melatonin rising as we get towards midnight is another normal circadian rhythm. And they can be very out of whack. And one of the things Gary and I do with people that we think that their circadian rhythms are out of whack, we do something called an adrenal salivary index test. It is a one day test. We, you um, spit into a tube and four times in a day, morning, noon, four and midnight, send it off and it comes back and it tells you how your cortisol levels are, how your DHEA is, which are all adrenal hormones. It's really a cool it's test. It's only 150 bucks. Yeah, it's a very informative <laughs> test. It's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> Begin the day with vitamin G. Gratitude. Oh. We suggest ending the day with it too. And the handouts that you have received, you see the morning power questions? Do you see that there? I'm gonna get it to you. Okay, it's on its way. But um, there's practices of beginning the day, what are you most excited about today? What are you most grateful for today? What are you looking forward to today? Ending the night, what was, the, what was great about today? Who really did I connect with today? Things like that, just taking a moment to, to not just be so busy to move to the next thing or what's on my list for today, but hey, why don't we just breathe? You know, for those that like scripture, there's a, a scripture, one of my favorite. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. I think when he says seek first, it makes me think that maybe you do that first when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Give thanks. Do not intermittent fast if you have adrenal fatigue. Lisa, why? It'll just add to your adrenal fatigue. Yeah. Because you need to eat if you have adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. You want to control your blood sugar. If your adrenals are low, probably not a good idea to do a lot of fasting yet because you could age yourself faster. Enjoy life, we put on there, play music, have fun, engage in something creative, sing, paint, look at poetry, read poetry, talk, laugh, tell stories, you know, all those good things that sometimes we're sitting in front of the news instead of really doing something fun and creative, you know? I mean, what an energy drain, mm -hmm. you know? Instead of an energy give. Relaxation techniques. Listening to calming nature sounds can help reduce stress and promote relaxation. Practice mindfulness and meditation and prayer. Take Epsom salt baths, I love that. If you have any area of your body that's sore, instead of just mixing the Epsom salts into the bath and doing a general one, wherever it's sore, I take a, a long um, uh, athletic sock, like a tube sock, put about two to three pounds of Epsom salts in there, put a rubber band around the end and put it on the area that's sore and soak for half an hour. If you got soreness in your neck, mid back, low back, put one sock here, one sock in the middle, one sock across here. Who's ever benefited from an Epsom salt bath? Yes, 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 we all have. I just read about adding baking soda to your Epsom salt and I forget the reason why it said to do that. And well, probably baking soda is alkaline and it'll pull the acidic um, you know, acids out like lactic acid. And magnesium, you know, Epsom salt is a magnesium salt and calcium does this to a muscle, but magnesium does that to a muscle. So it's gonna infuse a magnesium in and relax the muscles and pull the acids out. It's a fascinating thing to do. Take saunas, jump in the ocean, good for magnesium absorption receive massages and engage in visualization. Think about the things that are important to you. Who do you love? Who loves you? What do you want to see in your day? What do you want to see in your future? So I put another handout in here that Maria's right on the verge of passing out. It's called DSF. 
this is one of the things that has been something I've used since 1987. Um, I've healed, helped heal so many people by using DSF. It's called De-Stress Formula. Phenomenal product. I only suggest taking it in the morning and at lunch, never at night. It has B vitamins, it has some glandulars, but I've helped people heal their knees. I've, I've helped gold medal um, athletes um, fix their knees and their shoulders and do optimum performance. Lots of different um, uses for this. This is a great product to use in the morning. We usually suggest we put it in the mouth. Like today, I had my organic coffee, raw cream, and then I put three DSF in my mouth with a glass, uh, a mouthful of coffee, and I crunched them all up. Because I want my brain to know what's going into my body so it can send it to where it needs to be. How many people ever went to the refrigerator, and while mom wasn't looking, had a sip of the orange juice, but it had gone back? Anybody ever do that? <laughs> Just me? Oh, shoot. Uh, anybody ever sip the milk out of the cart and it had gone bad? Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, you did too? All right. You and me, we just bonded. Just that. Okay. But um, why is that? I mean, if you went to a, a spring you thought was good, but the water was tainted, or you took a sip out of the stream and it didn't taste good, you spit it out, right? That's part of our sensory system, knowing something's good or bad. So you can use the same sensory system to know if there's something good, and there's studies that show that the nutrients that you take, mm -hmm. if you can chew them, it'll send them to where they're needed faster, not better absorption. This is really good. This is called Adrenacalm. We use this usually at night, or if someone has a severe adrenal fatigue, Adrenacalm really works well because you rub it on your body, and it absorbs the phosphatidylserine and lowers the, the cortisol load, and um, and really helps. If we, if someone's really deficient, like I've had some people, we're gonna demonstrate real quick. Gosh, I talk too much. Um, but we're gonna demonstrate a couple things tonight for you. Your blood pressure, when you go from a lying position to a standing position, your systolic blood pressure should increase 10 millimeters. Why is that? It's to keep the blood from running out of your head. If you had a water bottle on the side, and you tilt it up like that, where does the water go? Down. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen in our brain because if the blood rushes out of our brain, we're gonna get dizzy and disoriented. So we have this right here, we're gonna demonstrate one person tonight. Dr. Lisa is gonna show the citric acid cycle and energy production by breathing into a bag and seeing if carbon dioxide helps your, but Adrenacalm is a great product. We use usually both of those for most of our patients that are experiencing stress. NET, oh my gosh. Who's experienced NET and the benefits of NET? Good, yes. Uh, yes oh, and yes. Yes and yes. Yeah. NET is based on 3,000 years of Chinese research. I think God in part of the Chinese, they were kind of isolated. I think God just gave them a whole interesting vantage point that no other culture ever received. Um, it's fascinating, but what they did, the emperors made the doctors gather data from the patients and in terms of where they were hurting, what symptoms they had, but they also asked them, what are your most common feelings, your most common or favorite bad feelings that you have? And they found the people with liver problems, they were experiencing frustration and anger and resentment and indecision and stubbornness and and then the people with lung problems grief sadness yearning cloudy thinking i'll tell one quick story a woman comes into my office 87 years old she's coughing 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 i'm washing my hands in between patients i look her over she pulls her hanky away and it's bloody it's like oh my gosh okay she said i can tell her story her name was christine higdon I went over, here's a young doctor, probably 36 years old. Hi, Mrs. Higdon, I'm Dr. Well, I said, you got quite a cough, yeah, I do. And she said, uh, I said, um, I noticed there's blood on your handkerchief. She goes, yeah, there is. I said, Mrs. Higdon, kind of like a parent, I said, Mrs. Higdon, you should get to the hospital. And she squinted her eyes, she stared at me, she goes, listen here, Dr. Arthur. 
I've been in and out of the hospital for the last two years. They've given me every damn drug they got, and I'm not getting better. The only reason I came here is because my son said you do a bunch of different weird stuff that helps people get well. That's why I'm here. If you're not going to take me back there, then I'm going to leave right now. I said, okay, 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 I'm sorry. So I said, come on down. So I said, I'm going to do a whole bunch of different things and see if I think I can help you. So I went to the four system approach that you saw, chemistry, structure, emotion, electrical, right? So I went to the nerve supply for the lung. It was sore as could be. That vertebra was rotated out of place. I took her hanky and I wrapped it up in a bunch of tissues and I put it next to her body underneath the magnet. I muscle tested her and every muscle in her body went weak. I went and held different, different supplements and everything underneath to see what might help her. And I surmised from that I thought that she may have a resistant, antibiotic resistant bacteria, a virus, and a whole fungal colony living in her lungs. Mm. Then I went to the acupuncture circuits for the lungs. Mm. All those circuits were active. And then I said, so this has been going on for two years. I, I said, what happened two years ago? And she started to cry. Mm. But the emotions for the lungs, grief, sadness, anguish, crying. Mm. I said, can you share with me what happened? She goes, well, my husband of 67 years died. Mm. So we took some x-rays and I had her come back the next day. She said, can you help me? I said, I think I can, but I do hesitate to take your case on. She says, why is that? I said, it's going to be very comprehensive. You're going to have to change some things. You can't eat your sweets. You can't eat the chocolate. You're going to have to take a break from the wine that you like. We have a bunch of work to do together. And she goes, how much is that going to cost? She goes, oh my gosh. I said, I know. I'm just saying. You're going to have to find the value in doing this. Otherwise, let's don't even start. She thought about it. She goes, okay, I'm all in. I've been trying everything else. I'm in. And eight weeks later, she was all well. But she did the work. And she was compliant. Wow. Yeah, and that's what it takes. You got to put on your hard hat sometimes. If you value building something or remodeling your bathroom, your kitchen, you're going to have to put out. If you don't do the work, you don't get what you want. If you don't pay the price, you don't get the prize. It's just the reality of life, isn't it? So this technique, uh, basically, these people were cancer survivors, and you have a handout for that, and Maria's just about ready to hand that to you. Um, and this one actually were a bunch of cancer survivors, and they videotaped their brains on an MRI when, the, when they said, okay, now remember back when the doctors came in the office and said, you have cancer? This is what their brains did. They lit up with inflammatory chemicals. Oh. Then they did this technique that I'm telling you about, NET, based on Chinese medicine. They did four hours over the next four weeks. This is at the University of Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. And they found no more stress response four weeks later. Yeah. So there are these incredible techniques that are out there for people that want to play. Okay. Re so, Jay, before you yeah. go on about NET, will you touch on them also getting the fast technique? Oh, yeah, yeah. There is a technique that if you want to do a self-help self -help, help technique, um, it shows you how to do a technique where you think about what's stressing you out and you hold the, the, uh, the acupuncture points on your wrist, which it will show you, and you just breathe into it and breathe into the stress and let it go. Breathe in, feel the stress and let it go. It's just a, a simple technique which is effective. It's not nearly as effective as going down and finding the original event and what the pattern is that your body's stuck in, but it is a self-help technique that's very helpful and we gave you a handout on how to do that to yourself. Wow. Anything more on that? No? That's no? Yeah. Can I do a demo sure. on that? On the fast technique? Yeah. No, on the, uh, on the re oh, yeah. okay. This is just for energy since we're done enough fatigue. So we're and we won't, we won't go too much longer. Yeah, we'll just do this, just kind of like to let you guys see it. So I would love somebody that has an endurance 
kind of a fatigue. Like, oh my gosh, like when I climb up the stairs, I'm super tired. Or when I exercise, I'm super tired. Does anybody have that kind of endurance fatigue? Maria? Okay, come on up. So Maria, Maria knows about muscle testing, so this will be good. So Maria, why don't you lay on your back for me? So if we think about endurance, let me just, yeah, I'll take that for you. I'll put it right here. If we think about endurance, most everybody with a large muscle, like your quad, should be able to give me bend. If we muscle test, let's just muscle test this really quick, okay? Let me push. Okay, so she's good and strong. So she should be able to give me like 10, 10 to 15 reps without fatiguing. So let's just see if she can, okay? So we're gonna muscle test, relax, muscle test, relax. Okay, here we go. Help me push, totally relax. Help me push. Oh, to two. Let's see if the other side does that too, okay? Help me push. Relax, don't be push. Relax, don't be push. So you get to, to three on that side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, she is gonna become a science experiment, okay? So does anybody remember your credit cycle at all from high school? Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope, okay. So the Krebs cycle makes ATP, ATP gives us energy, okay? And in the Krebs cycle, you use B vitamins, magnesium, you use like probably like 12 different really important substances, okay? And in the Krebs cycle, you throw off CO2. Super simple. So if she's not spinning the Krebs cycle well enough, she's not throwing off CO2, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see, actually what we'll do is, we can do it, we can do it that way. We can also find a weak muscle, but let's do it this way. I'm going to have you re-breathe you your own air, so you're going to re-breathe your own CO2, okay? So then after you re-breathe your own CO2, and if your muscles strengthen and you have more endurance, we know your credit cycle is like not doing what it should. Does that make sense? Everybody follow me? No. Okay. Why do you have more strength when you have when you breathe in CO2? Because your Krebs cycle is throwing off CO2, so you have CO2 in your blood. Your CO2 in your blood actually alkalinizes your blood. So you have CO2 in your system. So if her CO2 is diminished because her Krebs cycle is not spinning quickly enough, she will have more endurance by rebreathing her own CO2, okay? So you're gonna make a really firm seal of this paper bag around your nose and your mouth and you're gonna rebreathe. So your own CO2, okay? And let's go, so really firm. We're gonna go about eight cycles. And then I'm gonna re-muscle test her after she re-breathes her CO2 for endurance and seeing if she sticks a little bit more endurance. So it's kind of cool because you can use your body for experiment, like chemical, chemistry experiments. Okay, you ready, Maria? Here we go. Tell me push, relax. 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 Tell me push. Feel a little bit stronger? Yeah, I feel okay. right. Okay. <laughs> so she has a little mito mitochondrial lack, and so a lot of times that lack is because she doesn't have all the, the nutrients that she needs. You guys see the difference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a really simple, simple thing we can do in the office just to see, hmm, is your Krebs cycle working? So your Krebs cycle needs a little bit of love. A little work. A little work. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks, Maria. Why don't you show um, somebody else ligament laxity real quick? Ligament laxity. Does anyone feel like they like have undue stress, let's say, from work in their life? Or a joint or something that's bothering you? Or them. a joint that's bothering you? Yeah. <laughs> this is a super easy one to test. So, play it back for me. Do you have any knee pain by any chance? <laughs> you do. Okay. So, do you remember Gary was talking about the Taylor's muscle? The longest muscle in the body? 
which is a medial knee stabilizer. Yeah. Do you have medial knee pain, lateral knee pain? Yeah. Both? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. In, hip, you know, right in your hip too? Yeah. So I'm going to muscle test a medial knee stabilizer. Okay, I'm just going to do that first, and let's just see how that is. So whenever I muscle test, you always want to have you don't want to touch your body. So the sartorius muscle, we're going to bend your knee. Okay, you're going to flop your knee out. Okay, because this is bringing the origin and the insertion closer together. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is, as the origin and insertion are closer together, I'm going to ask you to hold it in that position, and I'm going to take you out of that. So can you, do you feel like that muscle locks or do you feel like that muscle's kind of weak? Kind of weak. Me too. Okay, go ahead and let that go. Now, one of the things is that we can do from there, because again, you're kind of like a, and you're kind of like a, a chemistry lab. Mm -hmm. I want you to touch here and here, okay? These areas right there, that's called your adrenal neural lymphatics. And if your adrenal glands are in any way, shape, or form, go ahead and flop it out again, involved in this, this will strengthen. Okay, feel a little different. Do we have any DSF up here? Um. Mm -hmm. I relax. Because sometimes what we can do then too is put some DSF in your mouth and see if that strengthens you too. And touch triple heater 23. So triple heater 23 is right there. And let's see if that strengthens you bend and flop again. You don't need push pull. That and that does. Yeah. So which means that you've got, you know, an endocrine issue that'll, you know, that you can be helped through a, helping your adrenals and because you triple here is in the endocrine system. Okay. So let's do ligament laxity. So let's just do let's do an upper body muscle. Don't need push. So what we're gonna do is is with ligament laxity, once again, your adrenal glands are involved in mineral corticoids, putting minerals into your system. So if I stretch all your ligaments in this upper body and then retest, see how you weaken a little bit? Not a lot, but a little bit. Let's do it again, don't you push. Good and strong. I'm gonna stretch out all your ligaments in that upper extremity and then don't you push again. So you weaken a little bit. So that's a, and a little bit of an adrenal thing. So why do you call that executive syndrome? Because executives can be stressed. Right. Okay. Oh. With this hand, we're gonna touch that mm -hmm. adrenal again. Okay. Neural lymphatic. Good. Let's re-stress stress that all those ligaments in that upper body limb, and then don't push. See how it strengthens. And it's fun too, because then what you can do too is you can put DSF in your mouth and do the same thing and see if it strengthens it, okay? So that's just kind of an example of a couple of things that we do for, you know, adrenal. Like yeah, you can walk around like that all day, exactly. If you rub it, if you rub it and, and it's one inch out, good job, Dr. Lisa. Thank you. Uh, one inch out from the center of your belly button. Everybody put your fingers in your belly button like this. And from the center of your belly button, come one inch out to the side. And then from there, go two inches up. Now, Get in deep and make little circles on that. It hurts. It hurts. Mm -hmm. These are the adrenal reflexes. So one of the things you can do to un undo some of the stress in our body is rub there for about a minute in little circles, especially for people like you that are having challenges sleeping and are under a lot of stress. Yeah. Rub here and then tap right on the side of your eyebrow. Bam, 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 right there, yeah. yeah. With Try the adrenal uh, cream? The, the the, cream? Yeah, and that's where you rub the adrenal comb, right in there too. Here and then too. tap right on the edge of your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So if you tapped 100 times, and then went one inch out, two inches up, and rub those, those are your reflexes for the adrenals. Mm -hmm. You'll decrease the stress response in the system. Mm -hmm. Now whoever gets lightheaded, you're lying down, and you get up real fast, and you get a little lightheaded, a little woozy. All right, let's check. Let's check you. Oh, I'm you. Sue. Right I'm there, Sue. you. Okay. I don't remember your name. Sue. 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 Come on, Sue. Okay. So, Raglan sign is really interesting. What it means is that, remember when we talked about 
the water bottle on the side and you turn it up and the water goes down. We don't want the blood to leave her. Um, yeah, we'll do your seated blood pressure first, which is how we already checks blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. But then we're gonna check in two different positions. We're gonna see if your blood pressure should raise, the systolic blood pressure should raise 10 millimeters of mercury when you go from a line to standing position to keep the blood from rushing out of your head. Because usually when people get a little bit lightheaded, Sometimes their blood pressure is actually dropping, and that's a sign of adrenal fatigue. I've had, my worst case I think I ever saw was a person that dropped 50 points going from a line to standing position, and I had to hold them to keep them from fainting. 50 points of drop. And then when we start to do nutritional therapy, or we start to do neuroemotional technique to bring up the stress files that are stressing this cortisol loop, maybe thinking, there's a tiger, there's a tiger somewhere who's gonna eat me, or my husband, or my wife, or my business, or you know, whatever's gonna happen in politics, and everybody's like freaking out on stuff, that's just using up your adrenal reserves. So, it's real easy to tell where the sun is at. Can you roll that sleeve up? Sure. Good. All right, let me just have you sit right there. I still like these a little bit better than some of those mechanized ones because the mechanized ones some, sometimes take so long to do it. And this is kind of a, a quick response. And let me see if I got some glasses up here so I can actually read. Can I borrow your glasses, honey? Ooh, golden frames. write this down please? I will. I got Is it you. okay if I say this out loud, the, sure. my findings? <laughs> okay, so Seated blood pressure is high, um, and you don't have to tell me anything about any medications or anything, but I have it 148 over 84. Maybe a little high, you're on the spot right now. You know, you talked about white coat syndrome, uh, <laughs> turquoise necklace syndrome. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so now lie in the back. So this is the one that we actually really determine as one of the factors of adrenal stress. So in supine position, she's 148 over 78. Now let's see what happens when she stands up. Okay, stand up. One thirty over seventy-eight. So she dropped eighteen points instead of going up ten. Not by far the worst I've ever seen. But if your adrenals were at top function, you would have gone up to one forty-eight from a, a supine to a standing position. So you would benefit with supporting your adrenals 
doing some self-help techniques to lower your stress load. Maybe even seeing where's the stress coming from? What can be done? Is there a relationship or a, you know, a reconciliation or anything like that? No, news. Life. Yeah. Just life. News. Just life. Yeah. Just everything. Yeah. Just How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's, thanks. thank you, sir. Sure, thank you. But it's really interesting. The biggest drop was 50, so they, they owed their body 60 points of mercury, and she only owes her body 28. So, not by far the worst I've ever seen. Okay. That's a nice way to put it. Um, <laughs> knee stability, we kind of demonstrated that with Brent. Um, knee stability, we talked about it. The adrenal muscle supporting the knee, the adrenals get stressed, the, the short circuit of the adrenal circuit, the muscle turns off and now the knee becomes unstable. Okay? Uh, we did the neuro points. We showed you one inch out, two inches up. The acupuncture circuit for the adrenals right here, triple heater 23. And raglan sign we just did. So we did them all. Good. Um, conclusion. Incorporate, our suggestion is at least incorporate some self-care techniques. Uh, if you ever want to re-watch this, although it's, um, you know, an hour and a half, but uh, uh, if you ever wanted to, I think Maria is going to send it to you if you're on our email list now, if you ever want to catch up on anything, if there's something you wanted to relearn, uh, some self-care techniques in your daily practice, practice mindfulness exercise, eat well, pray, uh, get enough sleep, remember to take breaks when you need. And what we were just trying to do is just do something as a community service. If you would like to um, get a closer look at where you're at, there's a comprehensive metabolic assessment which takes you to er through every single physiological system and you rate basically symptoms that have to do with hormone imbalance, blood sugar, toxicity, everything. You answer these questions and you rate how bad they are. We take a look at that. An adrenal blood pressure test like we just did. Uh, goal and health declarative statement like um, like I did with the woman who I told you about, Christine. Uh, we check you on some of your health goals. Like, I'm okay with being healthy. I'm okay with feeling good. And muscle test you to those things, just like a lie detector test when the electrodes are hooked up to the guy sitting at the, at the police station. And he's got the electrodes here and here and the needles in the middle and the papers going by. What's your name? My name's Jim. Okay, the needle stays right in the middle. Okay, Jim, where were you last Friday night? Oh, I was at Bill's house. The needle goes like that. It's like, hmm, there's a stress response there. Well, muscle testing can give us a lot of the same type of information. And we try to use it for things that people like, let's say somebody's not sleeping well. I'm okay with sleeping well. Or do they stay strong on that? Or is there that, that change in congruency in the body electrically that you can find or some other things. So we test people on that, declared testing. Potential lab order for the adrenal stress test where you spit into the lab, we can order those things for you. Blood tests, ligament laxity, we will check if you've got a joint that seems to be a problem. We can check for ligament laxity, um, knee stability, acupuncture circuits, those kind of things. We just kind of are doing something like that just to give people like a, a little bit of a closer look at where they're at and um, what's going on for them and then determine if they if that's something that they want to do something about okay so any questions uh, we covered so much material and you've been such a good group that um, i haven't seen one yawn i haven't seen one and nobody nodded off and slept nobody left i was like wow amazing to go an hour and a half and, and do that. Any questions about anything? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. I've got to run back to you. I'm going to show you the phone thing. The phone thing? Yeah. Oh, you mean where we held it close to you? And you yeah, the 5G. Oh, the 5G. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to see this real, real quick? Yes. Oh.